Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Cam, and welcome back to my Villeneuve series, where I'll be covering every Denis Villeneuve movie from Polytechnic through Blade Runner 2049 in honor of Dune 2021 coming into theaters this October. I've already covered Polytechnic through Prisoners, aka what I call Denis Villeneuve's Pain Trilogy, so if you'd like to check those reviews out, they will be linked in the eye in the right-hand corner. My Prisoners review, I teamed up with Jacob Martin, I enjoyed that, so be sure to check that video out. But legit, the same year The Prisoners came out, Denis was releasing, by far and away, his weirdest movie, uh, Enemy. This movie stars Jake Gyllenhaal playing two roles, and the movie tells the story of a man, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, who lives a pretty normal life. He has a fairly routine job as a college professor, he has a girlfriend, he has an apartment, which kind of looks like the definition of a bachelor pad, but hey, I'm not complaining. But then he learns that there is another person out there who looks just like him. And no, it's not a case of if you squint really hard and maybe back up a few, you look similar. No, it's literally like they're identical versions of themselves. The difference being the doppelganger, or well, the other version of Gyllenhaal, is an actor. He has a beautiful wife who is about who is pregnant and they're about to become parents. You know, it seems like he's got a better grasp on things, but that is not the case. And then we enter just all the weirdness, to the point where Darren Aronofsky would be like, dude, tone it down. I had heard about Enemy for years, and I had never seen it before because it had come nowhere close to my area when it was released, so I just never saw it when it was initially it was initially released. But then I heard the buzz that this movie was different. And for many years I was thinking to myself, should I watch like an enemy explained video to go into to maybe what this movie is about? And I never did, because I said to myself, if I'm going to watch this movie, I want to watch it knowing as little as I can. And well, I am so glad that I did, because literally, as soon as this movie ended, I think this was my exact reaction. What the fuck just happened? But then, and I want to give a shout out to whoever runs the Triple Feature channel, they follow me on Twitter and they always leave really great comments on my videos. He reached out to me and, uh, and replied to my tweet saying, there's videos of Villeneuve explaining what he was trying to go for with this movie. And taking their advice, I'm like, all right, let's do it. And so I went down rabbit hole, watched a couple of interviews with him, and watched some explained videos. And as I sit here and record this, I actually have a lot more appreciation for this movie. Is it my favorite Villeneuve movie? No, I don't think so. However, I have a lot of respect for Enemy in that Villeneuve took a risk. I think at a certain point he's like, okay, I think I've got my style figured out. Let's get wild. And this is by far and away the wildest and weirdest movie Villeneuve has ever made, and I don't see that changing. It is important to note that this movie was produced by A24, the lovely folks who created normal movies like Midsommar, Hereditary, and The Lighthouse, as well as The Vivitch, so we know what we're dealing with here. And it's no different with this movie. A24's fingerprints, or at least their signature style, are represented throughout. To a point where upon, or at least for me, upon the ending of my first viewing, I was left with more questions than answers and most of those questions revolved around spiders. However, I think, and, and I'm not going to spoil anything, because if you do go see this movie, I recommend knowing as little as possible. If you do go watch this movie, take this piece of advice with you. This movie is about two versions of the same character going to a mental war with each other. If you know that, then I think you're good. With that out of the way, let's talk about what I loved, because I loved a lot of things about this movie. Top among them being Jake Gyllenhaal. I have been a fan of this actor for a very long time. I don't think he's ever 
turned in a bad performance, and that goes double for Enemy. He has to play two roles, a very mild-mannered college professor and, well, an actor. More of a supporting actor, or I guess an extra, but an actor nonetheless. And to Gyllenhaal's credit, he makes these two look very different. The professor ver is very neurotic, he wears, you know, ties, and he looks very unkempt. While the actor wears leather, he rides a motorcycle, he has a nice fancy apartment that looks very nice and is a high-rise, looks over the city, uh, he has a girlfriend and they're about to be parents like I mentioned. So as far as, as far as making these two look different and sound different, Gyllenhaal knocked it out of the ballpark because when you see these two together, it looks like one of those black and white cookies that you would get, to, at least in New York. I, I don't know if they sell them everywhere else, but that's what I thought it looked like. It is inevitable that the two would finally meet, and meet they do. However, it's not a case of, like, the two doinks at WrestleMania 9. The two are like, uh, what are we? Are we even anything? And let's just say it eventually dissolves into something that is just not going to work out for anyone. I also love the cinematography. This was actually not Roger Deakins behind the camera this time. It was a cinematographer named, and I'm going to try and say this name right, Nicholas Balduk. Again, I probably butchered that, and I'm sorry. Uh, as a cinematographer, he primarily worked on more foreign movies that I had really never heard of. However, he's clearly got a talent. But be prepared to look at things through the color yellow. This movie uses yellow like The Matrix uses green. But I think, honestly, that's about as far as this review can conceivably go. And I don't want to dive into spoilers, so my final thoughts are this. Again, this is very much a Denis Villeneuve movie. You need to be physically and mentally prepared for what you are about to experience. However, if you walk out of this movie confused, I totally get it. I was too. I had to look up a couple videos and read and watch some interviews with Denis himself to try and figure out what just, just what the heck was going on here. But once you do and you understand what this movie's trying to go for, it's pretty good. Again, I'm not sure if this is Denis' masterpiece. It's certainly not a step down from the Pain trilogy because I think that's, I think especially Prisoners is a high water mark. But I, I think if I had to choose between the two, I would choose Prisoners. It's like a 1A, 1B situation. I will have a definitive Villeneuve ranking once Dune comes out, if that makes any sense. But I do recommend you all watch this movie at least once. It's only about 90 minutes long, so it's a relatively quick watch. But again, in the words of Scar from The Lion King, be prepared. But that is all from me. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. Next time in the Villeneuve series is going to be, technically speaking, one of Villeneuve's most beautiful movies. And, well, one of the harshest. Not in terms of pain, but because of, well reality-based stuff, for lack of a better word. It's 2015's Sicario. But if you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts down below, and if you like this video and you want to see more like it, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to allow notifications. That way, when a new video drops, you'll be the first to know about it. My name is Ryan Cam. I'll see you in the next one.